So the story that we're about to do is actually purportedly based on a true story about a bus that went missing in 1995 in China because there is a Route 375 in Beijing. And uh, over the years, it's become more of a Chinese urban legend and it's found its way into creepy pasta. So you know it's pretty scary. So you still might want to get your blankets as we delve into the last route of bus 375. The story happened on the bleak night of November 14th, 1995 in Beijing, China. An old man was waiting at a bus stop at midnight, making friendly chit chat with the only other person waiting, a young man that wasn't much for conversation. When the midnight bus 375 finally arrived, they both anxiously boarded. The old man took a seat near the front of the bus, while the young man sat a couple of rows behind him. There were no other passengers other than the driver and the lady ticket collector. After a while, the bus driver spotted two figures by the side of the road, waving at the bus. The driver stopped, and when the doors opened, there were actually three people who got on. There were two men who were supporting a third man between them, holding him up by the shoulders. The man in the middle was looking really out of it, and his head was slumped low so nobody could see his face. There was a dismal calm atmosphere inside the bus as the men moved along to the back. Suddenly, the old man jumps to his feet and starts searching the back of his pockets. He then eyes directly at the quiet young man he tried to befriend earlier, but now his brows furrowed and directly accused him of stealing his wallet. The young man put on a look of confusion and denied any such thing, but the old man was now in his face yelling at him to give the wallet back. The young man stood up as well and the situation escalated. The bus driver wasn't having any of this and began shouting at them as well for both of them to get off his bus. He physically escorted both men out and sped off into the night. The young man was about to plead his innocence once again but instantly realized that the old man's demeanor had completely changed from anger to what looked like relief. The old man said, Son, I, I think I just saved both of us. The young man just stood there confused, so the old man continued, Because as the three men were passing me, I could hear the middle gentleman's feet scraping on the bus floor, but that was all I heard. So when I looked back at them, I realized the other two had no feet. They were just floating along. They were not living people, and I had a sense that they did not have any good intentions for the man that was passed out or any of us on this bus. I couldn't save the driver or that lady without raising suspicion, but at least I could save you. The young man was grateful and visibly shaking. After that, they went to the nearest police station to report this event, but nobody believed them. But the very next day, the bus company issued this statement. Last night, the final bus for Route 375 vanished, along with the driver and ticket lady. The police immediately got into contact with the old and young man, who were considered mentally ill at the time, but now were sought for more answers. On the third day, the police found the missing bus in a water reservoir, about 100 kilometers away from its destination. Inside the bus, there were three very badly decomposed corpses, and then the mysteries surrounding this incident started. First being simply, that the bus did not have enough fuel to travel from its origin, to that reservoir. Secondly, the corpses found were too decomposed for just 48 hours. Even if it was summer, the process of decomposition would not be that quick. Third, the police went through all security camera footage set up for the various entrances to that reservoir, but found footage for that night missing. And lastly, who was the third passenger? But to the old man, the real question is, who were those two men?